Welcome to Small Business Talks. My name is Shiraz Sadiq, and this is the Entrepreneurial Resilience Series brought to you by Gavro Accounting Tax Law Advisory and Canadian SME Business Magazine. Established in 2008, Gavro Accounting Tax Law Advisory is one of the fastest growing professional services firm in all of North America. Their team of financial and business advisors supports small business owners on their path to financial mastery through strategic accounting, tax, bookkeeping, legal, and proactive business coaching services. Their team challenges entrepreneurs to step into the confidence and courage they need to overcome obstacles to build wealth, their business, and increase their impact to change the world. In today's episode, we'll spend time with Paul Bennett, founder of Ashburnham Realty. It's rare to find someone who has completely given himself over to uplifting his community through various real estate projects, but there is so much more to him as you will see. Now here is Paul Bennett, founder of Ashburnham Realty. Let's go. And welcome to Small Business Talks. My name is Shiraz Sadiq, your host for this podcast series. Today, we're in conversation with Paul Bennett. Now, I'm not going to introduce his company. I'm not going to even introduce his title because what he does is so unique that he gets bothered about it all the time and comes up with creative names like Community Builder. Let's find out about that first. First of all, Paul, welcome and thanks for making the time to chat with us today. Thank you very much for having me. Now, uh, how long have you been doing what you do, but what is it that you do? Uh, first part of the question, going over 20 years now, which is depressing. Uh, but exciting at the same time. Okay. Uh, and I guess when, in theory, what we do is uh, developing and property management. Uh, the word developers kind of got some bad terms in the last few years, and we'd like to think we do more than just build buildings or, or help out communities. So we use the term community builder if we can. Okay. And is that to fend off any stigma that people have with the term developer? Well, I think for me, uh, as an entrepreneur, I think I try and do more than just build things. I try and think about the holistic community and how we're making our world a better place. So both the community in terms of its people, but also the environment that surrounds the community and that we're leaving to our, our future generations. So we try and make it bigger than just developing or building. Yeah. And in, I guess in the last 10, 15 years, there is that sense of responsibility for every entrepreneur to contribute in more ways than simply their own personal bottom line. Now, uh, real talk for a second. Of course. Yeah. Uh, you said 20 years. Yeah. The idea of contributing to the community as a whole, is that something that's matured in you or you've always been like that or? Yeah. I don't think I ever got into my life wanting to be a builder. I actually am a person. I probably should have been a teacher. I really enjoy helping people and, uh, you know, doing this kind of thing, actually talking and, and helping folks out. Uh, I fell into the world of building. And so I think that my personality lends itself now to what I do in a different way. So I don't, think about things where how most builders would. So I do try and think about a, a greater context of how we do what we do for the world, what we do for our community, okay. for our environment, and that type of thing. So when, when we connected last week, where we were talking about no opportunity or experiences ever wasted. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, you're right back on that theme about other experiences lend and build up to the character of what it means to be a builder today. Correct. Yeah, very much so. So what are some of those other experiences that some people might be tempted to throw away and say, well, that has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now, but it actually does. What are some of those diverse experiences you've gone through? I, kind of everything. But, and it's funny. I'm one of those people that I've, I've always said that you don't, you can't really plan. Like as much as everyone, okay. we're going to sit in these situations, you're going to, you need to make your five year plan, your 10 year plan. And, you know, these things you got to know your path. And I think now more than ever in our world, we, it's tough to make a plan. So for me, especially, I've gone through those situations where, you know, I, I would have never put myself in the seat I'm sitting in today because it's just kind of taking a choose your own adventure life through, through my life. I went to school for economics and I'm sitting here building buildings and being a community builder. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if there's one in per se in particular, but I do think that it's actually impossible. I find now to make that plan of, you know, the experience you need to go through to become a certain person in life or an entrepreneur. Uh, you just got to be ready to uh, react to everything that comes out every day. Okay, so you would draw a very strong tie and a line between what it means to be an entrepreneur and the ability to pivot. To be flexible, for sure. To be flexible, yep. okay. Yep. Okay, so when you're flexing, you've made decisions that you had no idea how it's actually going to turn out. Well, yeah, so in my world, so I, you know, we're building two buildings right now. One was designed six years ago. One was designed 10 years ago. You can imagine how flexible you have to be. Wow. Think of coming from a, through a pandemic where everyone's life in terms of how they work, how they live, how they play, uh, where they work, live and play, uh, has changed dramatically. So where, what our environment looks like has changed dramatically. So you, you can't just all of a sudden design something or, or make a plan today and then be ready in six months or two days or whatever. Our, ours is a long, long haul. So you have to be super flexible in terms of the, the changing world, the changing dynamic of what is happening in the world and, and be ready to change your thinking on it. Okay. So the community you live in right now, mm -hmm. where did you and how did you fall in love with this community and make this your own and put your stamp on it? And I think you just, the word community says it all. I've been very fortunate to have lived elsewhere, but also traveled all over the world. Okay. And this particular community, and hence why I'd like to use the word community builder, is I'd like to see more places in the world be like this. Uh, it's, uh, it, it really does take care of yourself. Like if it's one of those spots when you're walking down the street, you actually know people, everyone's got their local neighborhood grocery store, all that kind of thing. Uh, so for me, when I'm building projects or, you know, creating a community, I want to think about that. I want to think about what commercial tenants link with what residential tenants, how you can create that re real uh, culture within people and businesses within that community. So it's a, it's a bigger thought about how we can all work together to create neighborhoods and communities. Okay. So working together, your world, uh, all I heard was permits. All I heard was zoning. Mm -hmm. All I heard was I have to work with the city on a regular basis, maybe even regional councils on a, For sure. a regular basis. Uh, how do you build and nurture those relationships? Most people will look at, okay, I got to work with City Hall, then uh, it's going to take forever. Yeah. But when you're doing this for this many years, can you tell us about some of the better experiences that you've had? Well, their experience is what you make of it. So they're all good. Now, there's obviously bumps in the road through the way. Okay. Um, okay. But you just said it. It's all relationships, right? And everyone in, in the world, whether you're in, with a city or a, a province or a builder or a tradesperson, everyone's doing their job and everyone's doing the try to do their job at the best of their ability. So no one's in the world to try and hurt others, hopefully. Uh, so, you know, you have to expect, you know, appreciate everyone's uh, opinion. And yes, it does take in most situations six to eight years to do kind of projects and developments. And so the number of relationships that come and go over six or eight years and uh, you just got to make sure you nourish them all and take care of each other and uh, trust that the other people are in it for the same as you. There, There is a greater good at play here that everyone, if they work together, can find that greater good. So I've been fortunate where I've been able to see some of your work and some of your finished products. So uh, good job, by the way. Thanks. Yeah. We um, always try and get better. So there, we're, not, we're not there yet. Always trying to get better. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, can you describe a project that uh, you're really proud of? Not because everything went well, but because you had a bunch of hiccups and you're able to make it through. A big passion of mine is finding someone, I'm going to put quotes around affordable uh, rents for people. It, uh, the world of, of property in any, any way with, uh, land and building costs has become very difficult to build any kind of affordable, uh, rents of any kind. We have two projects on the go right now that have massive hurdles in them because of that, that in trying to deliver some kind of affordability to the market. 
Uh, there's no such thing as an affordable uh, apartment at all anymore, unfortunately, and there's no such thing even going to the grocery store isn't affordable anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that that's got has had a lot of hurdles, both of those projects, but they uh, they have proven to be really worthwhile. They're not done yet. One is almost done. Uh, the other one is just about to start. Uh, but those uh, those are really really important, and they're they're really important to me. So they've uh, yeah they've gone re- really well. Yeah, so it, it, it almost sounds like that keeps your passion burning when you're finding more purpose in what you're doing beyond your own take home bottom line. For sure. Also, why are we doing what we do? Like it, it's, it's a tough one. Like if you're just living your nine to five, your eight to four, and you go home at night and you shut your brain off, what, uh, why are we getting up in the morning, right? And no, no, no disrespect. Anyone that does that. Sure. But, but it, sure. Uh, yeah, at some point. But this is a life that we've chosen, the, yeah. the entrepreneur life. At some point, there is no line. There is no, there is no six o'clock. There is no quitting time. Your, your mind's always going. You're always trying to figure out how you can do more, how you can be better, how you can help your community more. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, we're in conversation with Paul Bennett of Ashburnham Realty. When we come back, we want to dig a little bit more into what you believe are potentially blurred lines between a nine to five and how we're always on. But at some point, you got to turn off. True. We'll be right back. Successful entrepreneurs and business owners who achieve greatness get there because they have the confidence to do extraordinary things. They have the confidence to make informed decisions based on their knowledge of three areas, where they are now, where they want to go, and the steps they need to get there as quickly and successfully as possible. Successful entrepreneurs and business owners get that confidence by being backed by North America's greatest business and financial advisors. At GoBro Accounting Tax Law Advisory, we support entrepreneurs and small businesses by giving them the confidence they need to achieve greatness. To be the best, you need to be backed by the best. Don't wait. Get started on your journey to greatness today. Again, speaking about blurred lines, and that tends to sum up what the entrepreneurial life is all about. You don't know where you begin and end. Mm -hmm. Some days are 18 hours. Some days you really only put in two hours if we're being honest. For sure. Yeah. Agreed. What are your thoughts about when those worlds come together as far as personal and business? Uh, yeah, it's funny. My dad uh, worked at GE growing up and he always told me a story that he don't, never wanted to count backwards. He said he wanted to work one day and beside him sitting at a, a cubicle was someone who said, I have three years, two months and 10 hours or whatever it was left till he retires. Wow. And so he said when he, when he left, he was like, I'm not coming back to work ever again because I don't ever want to feel that way. I want to feel my life is all encompassed and I want to feel every day I'm doing something important. I'm not counting backwards to the next phase in life, even if that is the weekend. I'm not looking on a Wednesday afternoon like I'm two days away from the weekend. Uh, so I always took that and I was like, I'm never going to have that situation where I'm counting backwards. I want to feel that my Tuesdays are my Saturdays, my Sundays are my Wednesdays. And I have that same kind of feeling every day because you feel like you're doing something really important in the world. That is uh, fantastic. Just like, so the inverse of that would, of course, be counting up. Yeah. Right. So in your business, can you describe how that plays out in how you execute the life of your business as far as counting up? Is it accumulating more community projects? Is it how would you fill that blank as far as this is what it's going to equal my life as counting up? Yeah. And I don't, I don't think I have that. And it's weird. People always seem to have that. Like I have like, you know, in terms of a goal or an end place or what that could look like going forward. And I really don't feel I have that. I don't, uh, what, what it looks like next or what all we can do. Cause I really do just enjoy what I do so much that I just try and go live every day with the same set of values, try and treat people the same every day. Okay. And I honestly feel that if you do that, you, whatever you're doing, you will get to that spot in your life where you're meant to be. I don't have that, uh, you know, picture on my wall that uh, that is saying this is where we need to be or this is what it's going to look like. And I understand some people do, and I'm I'm really proud and respect those folks. But to me, it's about a daily uh, how to live your life, how to treat people, and uh, yeah, that's how I try to get to get through every day. Okay, well, I, I'm not sure if you've met uh, Robert Gavreau. He is uh, one of the sponsors of this entire series, the Canadian Entrepreneurship Series, and one of the things that you two have in common is the desire Mm -hmm. and the ability to invest in others. You mentioned the word, you might have ended up being a teacher. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting because uh, that's kind of his story as well. Mm -hmm. And you can see how he likes to invest in others. Uh, Venture North. What is Venture North? How did it start? Why did it start? What is it all about? So Venture North is Peter Rowe's version of a uh, business hub. Um, Bob Govro and a couple of other friends of ours got together and uh, created this, you know, somewhat Peterborough centric idea of why we want to start and grow business in Peterborough. Okay. To our earlier comments about community, Peterborough is a community like many other small towns. 
that wrap their arms around businesses and help them grow and succeed. So that was kind of our uh, idea to bring a bunch of those uh, business organizations together that can help grow uh, businesses because we didn't know where we would send people if they said, hey, I've got a really cool business idea. Okay, so this wasn't an initiative uh, generated uh, through the city or for, you know, through, for government. This was entrepreneurs getting together and saying, hey, we've learned a lot. How do we help other entrepreneurs? So this is kind of like an entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. Totally. And, and there's, you know, mentorship there. There's all that kind of thing for, you know, connecting to other entrepreneurs. Cause okay. unfortunately with anything government led, there are some gaps that can't be filled where in entrepreneurial world, we can say, Hey, let's do this tomorrow. And we'll go, all right, sounds, sounds great. We don't have any barriers to that. We'll make it happen. They don't have to go budget cycle to budget cycle. We'll just think of a good idea and, and hopefully uh, make it happen. Okay. So I think this is important. Venture North. How does someone connect with Venture North here in the Peterborough area? Uh, you, you can just go direct, directly to the building. Without the idea of it was to actually have that one door, that one stop. If you had a business idea, you could just walk in the door and there'd be people there to help you, whether it was with business planning or you know, getting financing or whatever it was you needed. So we have some of those, the government agencies like uh, P. Rocourt, the Economic Development, um, Community Futures, all those different groups that really do a ton of great work. They're just all in the same location now. So you don't have to go all over the place and in some cases not in Peterborough. Um, so now all those things are there to help. So hopefully to simplify and hopefully grow more businesses, whether they're small or big, um, to help our community grow and have more people live here and live in a great way. That is fantastic. Now, uh, there's this, uh, a friend of mine, he's an avid golfer. Okay. And he says, you only see a highlight on the golf course after it follows a really bad shot. Because if if I'm behind a tree or in the rough and I get it on the green or in the hole, that's what makes it amazing. It's responding to challenge or a hard time or a hard position where you can't see the end goal, but you just come up with that amazing shot, that highlight, mm -hmm. right? Can you describe uh, one or two of your highlights that started from a bad position, hmm. not a position of perfection. I really, really appreciate the golf analogy because a hundred percent, I've been the person behind a tree all the time. And I also think I've mastered the, the round of golf that is 38, 48, uh, which is not good for uh, the, the golfers <laughs> out there. Um, but yeah, I, I think that is a really good, uh, analogy because I feel like that's life as an entrepreneur. Sometimes you end up with your ball behind the tree, actually end up, uh, anywhere behind trees or in water or in rough and you have to be ready to expect that to happen. Okay. Um, in my world as an entrepreneur and a builder, I have to compartmentalize it because really failure is a daily, if not hourly situation where you can't, uh, you, you can't expect not to fail. You can't be ready not to fail because it's going to happen all the time. Um, I've had more large failures than I would care to, to discuss, to be totally honest. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the big things in you, you have to compartmentalize and be like, okay, now I'm ready to move on. Something bad happened. I'm ready to move on. And uh, it doesn't matter whether it's daily, weekly, or, or monthly, it's going to happen. It's going to happen a lot. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you've been listening into this series more than one, every single entrepreneur that we've spoken to has said the exact same things about what failure is. It's a part of the journey. So definitely get used to it. Now, Paul, you describe scenarios as uh, wanting to avoid what it means uh, to use the terminology developer. That's because, well, put it to you this way. Personally, I don't know a single rental job that finished on time <laughs> of anyone doing, and that's just rental work. Totally. Uh, and you're right. It does kind of get a, a bad rap. Mm -hmm. But it's all those little dependencies that come in the way because of all the little moving parts that are just out of your control. So be nice to your general contractor because <laughs> not everything is within their control. Now, uh, in scenarios where you're so dependent on someone else moving because if they don't, the trickle effect downstream where they're dry because they got no water flowing because the dam didn't do its job. Correct. Yeah. Uh, how do you handle relationships then in the meantime? It's funny, I think when you say the idea of a developer gets a bad name, I understand where the name comes from because of all the stuff that happens. It's okay. you, you, Sometimes you'll hear about a, a developer or builder that isn't the nicest person. The, the, to your point, there's so many bad things that happen. You can understand where those relationships get really, really strained. And yeah, so that's the toughest thing. And in, in my world, there's so many things that get that are out of your control and that really do get in your way. Uh, so you it, you have to put an emphasis. You have to take a step back. You have to breathe. You have to compartmentalize. Like, okay, this is this is one small thing. I've got to figure out how to solve this because you can't ruin those relationships. 
How do you not take that personally though? Because you've put so much effort into working with your client mm -hmm. and then some vendor who simply has to deliver steel, using that as an analogy or yep. wood or lumber, whatever Very it is. Very accurate. Yeah. Th that's all they got to do. Mm -hmm. And you've put so much. How do you handle your emotions in that moment where you just want to unload on this person? But you know, you know what? I need them to deliver more wood to the next project. So I can't. <laughs> How do you balance that release of emotion? But let, it, let them know that this isn't good. It's funny when I like growing up, I was a very impatient kid. I was an only child. So I think I, the patience was not a virtue of mine. Okay. And I knew that. So I've worked very, very hard at being very, very patient and I have to be. So in my world, like in most entrepreneurial worlds, you have to understand patience. You can't, to your point, lose your cool. You can imagine what's happened in the last two years with a pandemic. And so all the things that we're talking about that are usual delays or usual problems. I've now been put on steroids, like in terms of every little delay now is, okay. it, it, is, it changes the game forever for a lot of people in, in my world, especially. Uh, so yeah, you, you 100% have to find patience. However, uh, as humans, we can figure out how to do that. It is not easy, uh, no. but, but it's a daily, you know, it's a daily meditation almost of trying to figure out how to find that patience. I like that word meditation. Now, would you define and categorize patience as a skill set that you can learn and grow in or a mindset, a characteristic that you would develop? I would say it's both. I think that's actually a really good way of putting it. Okay. Uh, as I said, I don't think I was patient in my life, uh, whether it was personal relationships or business relationships. I wasn't a patient person and I knew that and I had to practice it as a, as a skill. But then you also have to find things in your life that develop patience, whether it be, you know, fitness and, uh, you know, exercise, okay. whether it be community, hanging out with friends, whatever that is to give you that sense of relief, that sense of, you know, well being, because that's what patience is. You can't always, to your point about having, uh, we're always working 24 hours a day. You can't do that. You would never have patience. You would be so high strung that you would yeah. never get anything done. So, so a hundred percent, you would need to find, I think you need to find, uh, how to hone that skill, but you also need to find the things in your life that allow you to have that skill. Okay. Earlier, when we began speaking, you mentioned, uh, you know, you're not one to develop detailed plans, but you certainly have a sense of direction as far as where you're headed. How do you balance that where, okay, I can't get into a detailed plan because pivots are going to happen and I need to be ready for those pivots. Yep. Because if I break my plan, I might be broken. So I get that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, for entrepreneurs who are starting out, there is that sense of structure that's re required. So what would you say is the difference between a, a direction and a plan? So obviously in, in my world, I have to have a lot of structured plans. B buildings are very structured. Of course. You know, yeah. timelines are very structured. So I, you know, obviously by, by joking saying I don't make plans, I have to make plans. But you've got, that's a very good differentiation between plans and direction. When you say something like direction, that's where I get into a situation where I can't plan what the future is going to look like. Like okay. you know, again, going back to something like the pandemic, what does, how do people live and work in the future? It has changed so dramatically. We're into a world of metaverse now. Like what, what, what are commercial spaces going to look like in two, five, 10 years? Right. I'm building commercial spaces. Do I now have to build virtual commercial spaces? So, you know, in terms of not making plans, I mean, you have to be really fluid and really reactionary to what goes on in the world. Where I find, you know, unfortunately, if you were a 15, 16, 18 year old kid out there right now or young adult, uh, you're looking to go to school and make a plan and well, I'm going to take this and I'm going to be that. I don't know if there's such a thing anymore, unless you're going to be an accountant or a doctor. There's some really unique paths that you can take that you mm -hmm. have that structure. Mm -hmm. But for most of us, our worlds are going to change so dramatically that you just have to be able to problem solve. You know, hone good relationships, be a good person, ask the right questions. Because ask the right questions. Okay. Yeah, because it's just it, planning is great, but it's it's only planning as much as you can until uh, the world changes. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in conversation with Paul Bennett. And I think one of the key takeaway that personally I'm going to uh, be able to benefit from is build plans with a bit of flex in them. Thank you for making the time and taking the time to be with us here today. Now, if people want to find out more about Venture North, and I know I asked you this yeah. already, how do they connect with Venture North other than the one door policy that you described, right? Like, hey, one door, someone online, someone outside of the Peterborough community, how do they connect? Uh, just through our, like Ashburn and Realty or through our, our website, through our office, we can connect to all the different tenants that we have there. Um, yeah, and, and that would be great. And even if people want to, to move to a community like Peterborough, it's a great spot to be, and we would love to help them find a location too.
That's fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. And if you have any more questions, reach out to Paul. He's always open to helping out other entrepreneurs. You can feel his passion for his city and passion always leads to progress towards the potential of possibilities. Thank you once again, Paul, for joining us on Small Business Talks and for sharing your journey with our audience today. Thank you to the team at Canadian SME Business Magazine for making this series possible. And thank you for spending time investing in your business to move forward with Small Business Talks. The Entrepreneurial Resilience Series has been brought to you by Govro Accounting Tax Law Advisory, helping you reach new levels of financial success. Visit govrocpa.ca to reach those levels you feel your business is capable of. This is Shiraz Sadiq, paving a way for your prosperity.